Welcome to Be Real Conversations, the podcast where I go behind the scenes and chat to amazing individuals in various industries and find out what it takes to be at the top of their field. On today's episode, we have Okay Majosi, one of South Africa's most sought after photographers. He has done work with the likes of Durban Gogo, Gamon Pella, Makazi, Focalistic, Jezik, just to name a few. He is recently the Canon Ambassador. And he was also voted Photographer of the Year by Umkosi Show Recognition Awards in 2021. Welcome to Bureau Conversations. You know it is. It is your boy Umshuti Wabashuti. I am with an amazing photographer, an amazing human being who I have had that opportunity to meet in person for the first time. In fact, for, I think maybe it could be the second time today, right? Yeah. Second. Like, if not third, for sure. And as you guys might have heard, I am chilling with okay uh majosi such an amazing photographer i'm looking at his profile right now on instagram and he's sitting on sixty four thousand followers what an amazing guy welcome to the podcast bro i uh, think such such a great pleasure to be here it's definitely great to, for you to come to this podcast i know you and i have been talking about this for years it's time. I need now busy, doggy. I'm shoot over shit, so yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> yeah, man. Firstly, man, before we just go anywhere, I just want to say congratulations. I think you know from the notes I'm looking at here, this is congratulations from the previous studio I had. But I'm sure I'm, you just gave me some intel on a different, um, on something on your new venture. So I'll just, I'm all I'm gonna say is congratulations. Uh, thank you very much, brother. Yeah, for sure, man. And yeah, if you guys want to book him for for studio, make sure that you hit him up on IG. I want to get started with the podcast, right? I want to find out how was your childhood and where did you grow up? I grew up in Marasbeck. Um, my dad though is from a Pine Town, so I grew up between Marasbeck and Pine Town. So when I'm not in Marasbeck, I'll be at my dad's in Pine Town. So. In case it in. Sure. So childhood, my mom used to work in Joburg. My dad used to work in Cape Town. So I grew up in Ginganga Kokunji. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm very disciplined. Took it from Ukoko. So yeah. So when my mom was 24, because my mom had me at like 16. Okay. So she was still in grade 10. So I was raised by Uko because I knew my gran was my mom and my mom was Umimi. Sure. Yeah, pretty much. And would you say that your childhood sort of affected how you are now in the career that you've chosen? A lot. A lot. Because my dad was a cameraman. Sure. My dad used to shoot, you know, Babakulan Changase, who was a photographer. And I kid you not, like when my dad used to go and shoot. My mom used to go to school and I used to go shooting with my dad and find his comments in Nikon. And then I grew up in a Nikon bag because they didn't have like um enough money to buy equal so, For sure. Yeah, yeah. That's really amazing, man. I didn't know that your father was a creative. And so would you say that you've taken after his um his talents and skills or did you want to do something else? I'm better than him. <laughs> <laughs> I tell him all the time. <laughs> like, yo, I won't get shy about that. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, yeah, and no. My my dad used to shoot my mom. So growing up, uh, it was a thing of hey, what I'm my queer shoot. So I always knew that Melik shoot, Melik shoot. I thought the only job in Msabin is to shoot. Wow, that's so interesting. Would you say that your inspiration came from what you saw at home. 100%. 100%. Because um, when my mom used to go to school, my dad used to go shooting and I used to go with him. And then, Uma, my buya, uya buya, uya keza, itombe, zigababa. It wasn't game at that time. I think it was a Kodak. Kodak yeah. So they were both doing it together. And for me, that's like, was the only job, dog. My grand doesn't work. My dad, we photographer. My mom helps my dad with his company. So it was just a thing of that sort. Like, that's the only job that I knew. So I knew that now I'm mainly a photographer. For sure. That's so interesting, bro. I think like a lot of us either 
from the people I'm interviewed, they come from a, a job they used to do and now they're a bit frustrated and they're starting something new. And you come from a history of photography of the creative industry. Can you share some of your favorite photographs or moments that you've shared with your father? Um. So what happened? Eh? The reason why I don't drink, I, I, I don't smoke. So I don't believe uh, in the thing of combining photography with alcohol. Because I saw it with my dad. Like a lot of my life and a lot of me is taken so much from my dad. I, I always say I look like my father, but I hustle like my mother. Because my mom was a hustler. Was because she's late now. But um, nah, you didn't kill her. So it's fine. Uh, <laughs> nah, but um, with that being said, uh, a lot of it is inspired by my dad. But at the same time, you know, white pools. Are so with him drinking, we didn't have... Because I grew up and then I'm seeing the reason why my mom will take the pictures there is because he's too drunk after sex. Sure. So I was just like, actually, you know, if I'm going to do this and do it the right way, I'm not going to drink at all. Mm-hmm. So I don't have memories with my dad at all. Actually, on my phone, I literally have one picture with my dad and it's a selfie. Shucks, that's so interesting. And I mean, you say he was your inspiration. Would you say that you've taken some of the business side of things from his side and implemented it and made them a better on your end of the business? No, my mom was a, so my thing is, so I grew up around business. So my mom is very good with business, was very good with business rather. And um, I used to be the one who is, it could be my shy, blah, 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 blah. So I think the business side is taken from my mom. The creative side um, is taken from my dad, yeah. For sure. So how do you handle the business side of photography? Things like contracts and invoicing, is it something that you do on your own? Because it can be quite taxing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I am no in no means a an administrative guy, and I am not a businessman. Um, I am a creative, and I really try to strive at my strong points because – what we do a lot as 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 creatives, we try to do everything. We 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 have to delegate. Sure. Like I went to my therapist once, and I was like, I feel very overwhelmed. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do that. She's like, delegate. Make it a bit easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delegate. Have a person who's very strong at that. Have a person who's very strong at that. So to answer your question. Nope, Google does my invoice. If you've booked me before, you know Google. Uh, Google does my invoicing. Uh, as to my day to day stuff, Ustad does my day to day stuff. Uh, studio management, Upe does the studio management and styling in the studio. Uh, the business side, Maui handles the business side. He's very good with business. I just handle the day to day shootings, and I'm good at that. So sure. yeah, it's all about just getting the right team and getting the right people, which is hard. But get the right team and get the right people behind you. And yeah, because Imoto, I'm sorry to, not to cut you off, but Imoto doesn't move on one wheel. So it needs four wheels. But a four wheel, utingani, utinga, it clash, utinga, accelerate, utinga, in. So these, all these things I've mentioned make a car. Sure. Although it's one, okay, my Josie is one. But you need a driver, you need wipes, you need this, you need that to formulate one thing. I really love that, man. And I know a lot of the creatives now want to be able to do everything. And as you say, we can't do everything. When we look at the end credits of a movie, it's literally long. And if you had to try and do that alone, it becomes a different job, right? Yeah. So how do you go about looking for new people and people that you can work with? Because a lot of us struggle doing that. Um, with me, so um, Ben knows. Um, I'm a very spiritual person. Um, I'm a very spiritual person. So everybody that's in my life um, is people that I knew before, before them joining my team. Sure. So Maui, for instance, Ngazi um, Umawak, I used to go to Maui's house all the time. Um, Bay, for instance, Bay and I, we neighbors. I know Bay all my life. Uh, Usta, Usta is a Majosi as well. Uh, I met Star through TK. Um, so everybody I know, it's like I knew them before they joined the team. So therefore, even Google, with my the person that does my books, um, literally is my best friend's PA, and I saw how good she is with my best friend. I was like, dog, Google's so good. Can I just have her to help me with a single project? And then 
she just stayed there forever. And everybody just kind of, I've never employed a single person. Everybody sees the cracks and then they come in with cements and just seal them. For sure. Yeah. I really love that. I mean, you've done that for yourself. You've cemented your brand and people are able to come close to you and actually want to be associated. So that's amazing, man. I know I'm currently struggling with that part to actually get people to join my team and also get them trustworthy. So I'm definitely using the method of getting people that are close to you and uh, people that you can trust. It's 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 always people that are close to you that will take you to uh, uh, to, uh, to the next level. And yeah. sometimes strangers, but but I believe so much in 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 family. Sure. That's why I call myself OK Majors. I call myself by my family name. I put an OK before my family name because when you call me, you've already agreed to whatever I have to say. You like it's OK Majors. So I am very fa- family orientated. I treasure relationships so much um even the new studio that uh i didn't say i have but we have um because it's not mine it's 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 for tk it's for star it's for it's for it's for maui it's for desire it's it's for all these people who are very close to me that i can't share it by myself if i have to share it by myself then god is like hi but when i but at at the same time, you just want to hog it to yourself. Ah, no, 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 no ways. If something is that good, you have to share it. Really love that, bro. That's solid advice. You sound like you're very seasoned in the industry. How long have you been in the industry for? Yeah. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> Would you say you started the minute you started practicing with your mom and dad? No. No. Uh, I started, uh, my mom actually bought me a camera before she passed away. Uh, my birthday is in Jan and um, my birthday is in January and my mom passed away in Feb, the 3rd of Feb. Um, so she didn't have money to buy my birthday gift because it was so early in the year. And then she only bought my birthday gift towards the end of the month, which was a Sony cyber shot. So that was in 2000, my mom passed away in 2011. So she bought me that Sony. And literally, I kid you not, um, at school, um, my when my college reunion, I used to use that camera to just like shoot people. I used to just carry it to school. Um, and people were like, Zippy, I eat some I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm gonna go print them a game. And that's how I used to actually get pocket money. So you give me five rands, two rand fifty, you print that a game, and then, um, I've already made two rand fifty profit. So that's all I know. That that's the only way I knew how to take care of me, I mean, my sister and I. So, I mentioned myself twice because I have to be a brother and I also have to be myself. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really love that, man. You're handling it so well. And as again, I mean, you're looking like you you are definitely are seasoned. I know that I I started not so long ago. And I think the you know, the the influence of your parents really helped a lot. How do you handle the complexity of the client wants Hollywood, wants this Hollywood or wants a picture this certain way? But okay, my Josie said. Hmm, I want the picture this way. How do you handle the two to, to make sure you deliver a product that works? Uh, for me, a client is always right. So if, 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 when, uh, if the client wants Hollywood, that means you are not ready for Hollywood. So therefore, you're not the right person for the job. So I will try and research ways on how I can accomplish that. But if I can't, there is a member of my team who can actually do it. So that, that's why it's always important to work with a team that, that, that will push you to the next level. So if the clients want Hollywood, that means I'm not ready. So I have to get another member of my team or a friend or, cause I don't even consider anybody in the industry competition. I consider them my colleagues. And M7 Zini, if you work in an office, you would ask the next person, Buti, how do I do A, B, and C? Exactly. So with photographers, like it's, 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 it's so nice that competition is, I will, not competition, um, but um, advice is so like you can either get it on YouTube, but I don't like YouTube. So I always ask the next person. So, but if I can't do it or therefore it's not my style, I'd literally delegate it to them and be like, yo, just you, you do it. I mean, it's my project, but you do it. Sure. Like if I have to take, um, if I have to take an example, uh, it's the recent project I did with Y. Um, I literally had eight photographers in one project. I had myself, I had paparazzi, I had David, I had Maluanda, I had TK, I had Rivoni, I had 
No, the list is long. I had Star, I had Umzegezege, I had so many photographers in one room. In one room. And everybody was doing different things and everybody knew that they're there for a certain picture. Because you are good at this, you're going to do this. Because you're good at that, you're going to do that. Because you're good at that, you're going to do that. That's still my projects. That's still my team. But um, that still has my name on it. But I can't be greedy and say, no, I know everything. No, I do everything. And the, pro- the project, I mean, was amazing. And I'm sure it wouldn't have turned out as well if you didn't have all those people there, right? Yeah, man. Jesus wasn't walking alone. That's why he had 12 men. <laughs> exactly. I really love that, bro. Collaboration is the way. And something that you're touching on, which is really true, is that we do have access to one another. And I think the competition element has sort of made all of us feel like we're in competition when in truth we're not. We are in an industry that is developing and it needs all of us to actually be part of it. So I'm glad you said this out loud. I want to ask, you've worked with a lot of artists, you've worked with a lot of famous people, you've worked with anybody you can think of really. I think just starting from a young age, can you pinpoint one moment where you were like, I've actually arrived? Um, it wasn't necessarily me. It was what I do onto another person's career. So if you have to look at me and how I started, né? um, I started, um, the first artist I shot was a Gamun Pela. What Gamun Pela, what happened to Gamu? Blew up. Um, she, it was her first ever PR picture. Um, the next person was Jazik. What happened to Jazik? Blew up. The next person was Mbura. What happened to Bura? Blew up. The next person is Pasta. What happens to Pasta? Blows up. Every time a person enters my studio for the very first time, they blow up. If you look at Bobby, her first ever PR picture, I shot it. Blew up. Uncle Waffles, her first ever PR picture. Blew up. Nkosa Zanadota, first ever PR pictures. Never been in studio before. Blew up. Lady Do. I called Lady Do. I was like, hey, Do. Um, you here, but please come here. I'll take this picture of you. I know we are here to shoot Itagi with the... Oh, oh. Oh, Devin Gogo, but um, let's take this picture. What happens to, to that picture? It becomes my first picture in the billboard in Times Square. Devin Gogo also, a first PR picture, blows up. The list is endless. So it's not necessarily about me. It's about what I am able to do onto that other person and what it does for them. I, see, I, I think God blesses the hand that gives than the one that receives. So I always, I'm a cheerful giver in whatever I do. So I, I don't believe that my craft and my, my work is for me. That's why I say it's okay, my Josie. I do this thing for all my Josie, not myself. It's okay, my Josie. Yeah, if I was doing it myself, I'll call my brand Spundo my Josie. It's about me. It's all about me. Nope. Stop. Really love that, bro. You literally just broke it down on some of the artists that you've worked with. One of the questions I want to ask is, How do you handle the collaboration between a model, um, a a, a retoucher, um, a graphic designer to come onto the one project that you have? Um, For me, though, I'd like to let people shine. eh? Like, I'd love to let people shine. I think my job in the industry is to become a versal. Like, um, if, 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 if you have to have to look at the people that came to me for for advice. Right now, they are shining in whatever they do. If you have to look at a Malwanda, Malwanda came to me without even knowing how to press a camera. True. Um, but today, we literally have the same amount of art covers. True. Because um, w- when he came to me, I didn't see competition. I saw a brother to nourish. So right now, he's my business partner. We are at a 50-50 uh, situation with the studio. Yeah. But I didn't see him as competition or I didn't see him as a kid. But I saw him as... Um, a brother to nourish and when he comes to a project I treat him as a brother when a model comes I treat that model like a sister so I think together we grow and divided we just stagnant amazing man and you've done so so much work with so many different people can you take us back to maybe think about when you started out photography and what it is now what do you think some of the things that have changed or some of the things that have grown the industry? Um, I was telling my other brother, Osta, my, my, my assistant, I'm like, Yazwina, you're actually at a very privileged point because when we started, we started with um, um, D7100. Um, you guys are starting off with, with um, 
I'm at five. Yeah. Like you're already at a very, very privileged point. So photography now it has moved to I think I think shooting with a, a mirrorless camera just it's like shooting with a phone, really. True. Like it's so hard to to miss focus. And before we used to miss focus a lot. All the time. Oh, <laughs> one picture will be sharp. Yeah. But now every picture is sharp because the camera can't allow you to or to be bad. Um that's why you find so many photographers are um oh, I'm looking for the right word. Um that's why you find so many photographers coming up because it's so easy to take a good picture for than sure. it is to take a bad picture now. For sure. So if 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 you've used a phone, if you've used an iPhone, you can literally use a mirrorless camera. I think you definitely can, as long as you just look, you learn the settings and, and, and see what you can do. There. You're good to go. And it's so much harder. It's so much harder to take a bad picture now. As from before, I remember I used to shoot with a pop-up flash. Um, so when we were shooting, we, we used to shoot these things in, in Durban called the, the Gaga's late, uh, late Night Sessions. Yeah. And then there was this white guy. I'm, I'm sorry to describe this person by race. I just forgot his name. Uh, but he used to come to me and like, why are you coming here with that pop-up flash? <laughs> and he used to hit my flash like this. Bah, bah. And, so just, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, but this flash is dope. This camera is dope. I just bought this camera. But I didn't know that you need strobe lights. You need this. You need that. So the, the, the information was, was not as what it is now. It's so much easier now because there's so many photographers and there's so many people who are doing what you're trying to do. So it's therefore in, uh, information is like, it's so easy to bounce off. But For before sure. you needed one white guy at that event, you don't know any other photographer because you're the only photographer in your event. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's so, it's, it's so much easier now. For sure. I really love the fact that it's easier too. I think, you, you know, it makes it easier for us to collaborate. Like you were saying, Definitely. how do you think storyboarding affects the outcome of your project? I believe as creative, we work in different ways. Uh, personally, I, I don't storyboard. Uh, I don't work off a mood board. I'll make one for a client who could say I have any understanding of what I'm trying to do, but I already have the picture in my, in my head. For sure. Um, when I, I get inspirations from like different things because I'd get an inspiration from an outfit, from what a person is wearing. Um, just my recent project, if you have to check on my Instagram, there's a picture of a girl standing like this with, with, um, with silver chains. Um, that inspiration, I literally got it from, from the slaves. I saw a picture with slaves with chains all over. I'm like, so we were wrapped in chains and right now we're wrapped in chains still, but we're wrapped in chains up here. Sure, so yeah. I got my, I literally get my inspiration from clothes. I literally get my inspiration from experience. Uh, not so much in storyboarding or in Pinterest. If you have to look at my pictures, none of my pictures are Pinterest. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I've got nothing that you can reference with Pinterest. Every single picture that I have or what I've shot is what I have up here or what I see a person wear. So, yeah. Clean. I actually love that too, man. You know, a lot of us have different ways of finding inspiration. And like, you know, as you say, I find it very difficult to look at something and come up with an idea. So that's really cool. I think collaboration is important. We need to collaborate because we all come up with ideas in so many ways and the results can be so different, right? For sure. How do you stay informed in terms of like the latest equipment, the latest news and, or anything that's happening in the industry really? I'm not informed. I'm the least informed guy there is. I, I, I literally went on to the R5 because Canon got me on board because I am a Canon ambassador now, but, um, I wasn't informed. I was still using, imagine I was using a camera from 2015. I was using a Canon 5D4. Um, but people are using them. I'm a mirrorless around me. So. Um, only now when I started, um, like attending these Canon events, um, they like, you need for, for you to to be with us, we have to use the latest gear. And then only now, like, I'm like, yo, this thing is dope, eh? (laughs) I'm really a granddad at this, bro. I'm going to 30, so I'm old. So, uh, and I believe like the best equipment you have is the equipment that you already have. Um, the best tool that you have is the one that you actually have in your in your in your bag i don't believe that you must buy this camera for your picture to, to look like this no 
There's no such a thing. Yeah. Nothing. The camera doesn't make a photographer. For sure. Yeah, what makes a photographer is the end product. It's the fact that reality meets expectation. It's the fact that a client is happy. It's the fact that you are able to make money. It's the fact that um your work is growing. And if those boxes are, t- uh, are ticked, Fuck an expensive camera. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. But, definitely allowed to say it. <laughs> but, yeah, but fuck an expensive camera. Whatever you have, start with it. And it will work. Trust me. Even a smartphone. I'm not sure about a smartphone. Because sure. I turned down... I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this, but I turned down um, an endorsement of the very... of the popular smartphones now because they wanted me to shoot pictures with the smartphone at the event. And I'm like... I've never done that before. Sure. It's a challenge for me. But what if I do bad? Sure. Therefore, my brand goes like this. Sure. And let me research a bit more. Let me try to do it on my own first. And therefore, I can teach people on how to do it. But I, iPhone photographers or Samsung photographers. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be able to shoot without learning it, I guess. Of, of course. Like anything. For sure. I'll be <laughs> exposed. I'll be exposed. Imagine imagine driving without it would do. Learners. You, I've driven with I learners, but I'm saying, <laughs> imagine driving with no experience without having to drive ever in your life. I mean, I'll be exposed. Although I understand the car and I know a car, but like, don't I, I really can't do it without the formal learning. I think you can definitely do it. I mean, I want to talk about the workshops that you're currently hosting now. So firstly, congratulations on the Canon thing. And then, yeah, even on the workshops, I think that's a huge congratulations because it shows you've got knowledge and you've got knowledge to give to. I think that, you know, the smartphone photography thing can come in through your workshops at a later stage. At a later day. stage, because, ish, man, it's, 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 it's scary. Actually, the brand was like, um, it's the beginning of the year. Everybody is going to ch- want to change their Pinterest um, uh, avatar. So we want you to shoot with a smartphone. Uh, we, we want everybody to come in and have a picture by my Josie shot with a smartphone. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, what is this picture? Is that? Because I can't retouch it. Sure. The space is, is it's not a roll. You don't have flash. There's yeah, so many like, things. Oh, uh, yeah. There's <laughs> like so, uh, so many disadvantages. And thank you about the, about the, um, about the workshop. Uh, it's such an amazing thing because I, al- I, I, I always wanted to do it, but I didn't know how to. So Canon was like, with with outdoor photos so yeah. they they want to create um a family bit basically because i'm a family driven guy i'm a very family orientated guy um they want to create a family of uh photographers where um let's say a serial is at a gig and his flesh just blew um you have a community or a family that you can say oh my Josie my flesh just blew and I noticed that you're shooting nearby sure. can you maybe borrow me your flesh in two seconds or can you go to outdoor photo for me and pick up the flesh mm-hmm. and yeah. yeah 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 so they 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 I think mean, they want to make this thing so much easier and so much convenient because they understand how expensive it is first and they understand the accessibility as well and they understand how fast the industry is growing so they 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 want a glue that ties together um, each and every photographer there is, if that's possible, sure. and also brand alignments and also just uh, being able to shoot, but without having the stress of worrying about gear. Yeah, man, I think that's beautiful, bro. Yeah. Collaborations are the future and you've got a wealth of knowledge. And I know a lot of photographers always say the thing of like, oh, no, man, I'm shy, I'm this and that. But I do think it's important for the industry and for many other reasons for us to be able to give the information whatever information you know and pass it on forward because again we won't grow it at all man so yeah congratulations on those thank you very much bro hopefully people are gonna come and hopefully it's gonna be nice because it's my first ever one i've sure. never hosted before i've never spoken in front of people um i kid you not but i start when i speak but whenever i speak sense i don't start her. I think we might as well give away a ticket actually for on bureau conversations. Give away a ticket to. Uh, Let's give away three tickets. Three tickets. Mm. I think the ticket is just one person. For sure. Let's give away three tickets. Three tickets. Mm. I, as as color space, in fact, we're gonna um dedicate three tickets to somebody to come to your show. Oh yeah. I think that's beautiful, bro. I Thank really you. do support what you're doing. And for me to you, I'm gonna give away another two more for anybody else to join that other person because photography is a community. For sure. I really love that. So five tickets are going to be given away. If you're listening to the podcast right now, 
please make sure that you hit myself and my Josie app and say, hey, man, I would love a ticket to this thing and let's go. Your first ever exhibition. Well done, bro. Hey, man, it's, 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 uh, there's a lot of first times, like my studio, the exhibition, the canon thing, like there's so many first times. And I, I think this year I've grown so much in just like three months. And that's why I'm open to doing something like this. Me, I'm shy, dog. I don't even go out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm always at my house. So yeah. uh, to do something like this is really, like, huge for me. So I really think this year is a year of me actually coming out my shy. I really love that, man. You talked about the photography industry really growing. Where do you see the future of the, the photography industry going in South Africa, generally? Um, so... I always thank the likes of Abu Sims, Abu Jeff, Abu, Abu Austin that, that paved the way for a black photographer. I always used to listen to Austin on radio sometimes when he used to be on Kuto's show. And I always thought, a photographer on radio, a photographer on a magazine, a black photographer shooting for a magazine. I'm like, those are the things that inspired me. And now those things are like a norm. So. I'm really, really, really seeing things like um, I take a lot of inspiration from Bona and I also take inspiration from guys like I will, Trevor Sturman. And I'm like, yo, to do a collaboration with an Adidas. Yeah. I mean, that's like really huge. So I really see photography there. I, I see the people who are next up even, not even excelling or exceeding them, but it's going to be faster to be on the same level as them. Sure. Because I believe like what they started is really great. It's a really great for another black photographer. For sure. Shout yeah. out to them, man. I think you mentioned, in fact, yeah. all those people you mentioned there, I also look up to them because they do such They're amazing, amazing work. Man. Brother. They're amazing. For sure. Yeah. Can you tell me about any up- upcoming projects that you are looking forward to this year? For myself? Yeah. yeah. I don't want to give away too much. You know, now I, 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 I am at a point where I don't share it until it's done um, because I notice with myself, I'm an oversharer. And um, what usually happens, you share it and then reality doesn't meet expectation. So, so now I only share it when it's done or I share it when it's ongoing or it needs sharing. But if you have to see, like the only time that you saw my studio is now when I showed you the picture, sure. but you haven't seen it on on. Instagram, else, you haven't yeah. seen it on my WhatsApp, you haven't seen it anywhere. Yeah. Um, I've got a few upcoming projects, but I, I, I feel like with respects to myself and my beliefs at the moment, I don't want to share it. Yeah. I don't want to share it. For sure. Yeah, I, I do want to share it when it comes up. For sure. Mm-hmm. We really appreciate that, man, and we hope you just carry on um, doing your thing. Can you tell me what do you think it takes to be at the top of what you do? It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a little less beers, uh, a little more knowledge, and a lot of asking for help. Um, I think pride is not, it, it doesn't belong at the top. I think ego doesn't belong at the top. I think competition, but com- good competition, uh, good competition in terms of yourself, Don't compete with other people. Compete with yourself. Compete with yourself last year. Look look at your KPIs last year. How much did I make last year? Um, What did I shoot last year? Compare yourself from the previous year other than comparing yourself to the next person because we are all running a different race. Uh, We might be doing the very same thing, but we might not be doing the very same thing for the very same reasons. So um, I believe competition has to be eliminated. I believe in collaboration. I believe in a lot of discipline. I believe in little less beers. Because if you do this thing with, I'm a beer, you're going to lose gear and gear is expensive. And you can't retain gear, dog. Like I was speaking to Steezus yesterday. He's like, in December, I I literally spent over 200 bucks on just gear. And imagine if you lose 200 grand in one minute of you being drunk. That is crazy. That's crazy. That, that is a lot of money. I think we do take it for granted that 
you know, we have this equipment, but it's actually expensive. It's a lot of money. Your setup here, I'm like, when I walked in here, I'm like, yeah, what the What if you do on John? I'm not giving anyone any ideas, but my guy has really nice gear and, and, and it really requires a lot of discipline. Like you have to have a nice security, you have to have bag guards, you have to have your space protected. I mean, you wouldn't have those things if it wasn't for discipline. So it really requires a lot of discipline. It's it's I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm at the top, but once I'm at the top, I'll understand that it's very tough, and I have to take extra precautions. I have to pray more than I pray now. I have to be very cautious of my surroundings more than I have now. I have to really collaborate with more people than I do now, maybe like more international people. So it takes off whatever I'm doing now into a broader scale. For sure. Yeah. I want us to take just maybe 30 seconds to dream a little. Light light some candles, light in paper, whatever we need to light. Who are we dreaming to work with in the future? What are the dreams and goals? What do they look like for you? Um for me I think I've worked with everyone that I wanted to work with in, in, in the country. Um, overseas, I don't have aspirations to work with anybody overseas besides Trevor. I always like to work with South African talent because I believe we can tell our South African stories better than anybody else could. And if you're a photographer in America, now you're trying to America. So I'm trying to South Africa as much as I can. I'm trying to shoot a Trevor Noah. I'm trying to shoot a Black Coffee. I'm really trying to shoot a Lady Smith Black Mambazo. Like the other day, I was shooting Maudela Queens. To some, to other people, shooting out Della Queens is like, ah. But to me, I mean, my grand used to listen to those people. My mom used to listen to those people. I listen to those people. So um, I believe there's nobody who can tell South African stories better than South Africans. And therefore, for me, it's very important to showcase South Africa as best as I can. There's a reason why Lady Smith Black Mambazo doesn't sing in English, doesn't, yo, 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 yo. Yeah. They can't do it, yeah. but they win Grammys with just being themselves. So I believe in me being as more South African as I can, I'll be able to attract the foreign market if, 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 if that's the goal. But my goal for me actually is just to become a better person and just to become very happy. And I think I've got everything to make myself happy, uh, which is my family, which is my business. My business is doing very well. My family is, I've got the, group, the best family. Uh, I'm I'm at peace. I am a very, very, I'm in a very, very, very happy state in my life. And that for me is 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 my ultimate dream. For sure. Yeah. I really love that, man. I do hope all the dreams and wishes that you have come true. I hope one day we can sit back and also be like, you, he said it on that podcast about his dreams. Yeah. So yeah, man, I really appreciate this. I really appreciate you taking your time to actually have a chat right. with me. I know that we may take this lightly, you know, it's like 40 minutes of just chatting yeah, yeah. and it's flying by so quickly, but I really appreciate it. I think that everybody else listening on Bureau Conversations will really enjoy this. And do you have any last words or anything that you'd like to say before we close off the podcast? If you whack, you whack. <laughs> <laughs> You can have all the passion in the world, but I, if you work, you work. Sure. I get it. I really love your work. Blah, blah, blah. What can I do in my life to to, 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 to make my pictures nice? Hey, brother, if you work, you work, dog. If, sure. if your shit doesn't smell, it doesn't it's smell. Not and there's sure. nothing we can do. For sure. There's nothing we can do. So, um, you must actually realize it at an early age or in an early stage. I am really not that guy. So I have to, we need lawyers. For sure. We need <laughs> the policemen. We need drivers. We need, not every, not all of us are going to be photographers. For sure. If you work, you work. For sure. I, I look, I mean, as, as some people might take that in a bad way, but I think the truth is, you know, at some things, you, you, we get all these questions all the time with some, and a lot of people, yeah. I was, I was listening to the other podcast where Black Coffee was saying, a lot of people will ask questions and they think they've done the job, right? Mm -hmm. And they haven't I'm done the job at all. So the people, yeah, started, yeah, people asking you the questions, yeah. they haven't done any work. Done and in fact, they should, they should go and do work. Yeah. And they have to put in the work. And if you work, you work, guys. I keep on saying this so many times. For sure. Dog, if, 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 you you can work at it, but maybe you are good at something else. For sure. And just just realize it at an early point. You know, this is not for me, sure. and I am not made for this. 
And therefore I can do something else and I can be good at it. And maybe you can become a millionaire at it. For sure. Dog, if it's a visa. Number one, lenses are expensive. <laughs> Cameras are expensive. <laughs> the time are expensive. The clients. It's editing. Like it's editing. and glam, but editing. It's a lot of work. For sure. So if you are actually not good at it, I just cut your losses early, dog, and just sure. do something else. If you whack, you up. I, I agree with that, bro. Thank you so much for coming to Bureau Conversations. Oh, yeah, this has really been amazing, bro. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't even know how to close this up, but I think you really this been amazing. Just, if you work, you work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, bro, thank you so much. Definitely catch you on the socials. How can we get in touch with you? Is it OK Majosi on Instagram? Yeah, it's at OK Majosi on Instagram. Um, and yeah, my Instagram actually takes you to my WhatsApp if you want to book me. Uh, it actually takes you straight to, to my WhatsApp and that's where we can. And please just on the 18th of March, please come to the workshop, please. And um, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking forward into opening my studio. I might be announcing it today. Um, For sure. It might be tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Depends on how I feel. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll definitely be there for the show. Um, we are giving away five tickets once again, but we'll keep promoting this. And uh, see you at the show, brother. Peace. All right.